CNBC is reporting that the Bitcoin spot ETFs will be approved this Wednesday and could start trading this week as well. And the spot ETF filers are all competing, cutting their fees, competition is heating up, everyone is chomping at the bit for these ETFs, and Wall Street, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and other big names will be active participants. I thought Jamie Dimon said this was all for criminals. Let's break it down. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, as you all may have heard, I've been under the weather. The flu hit me really bad this season, but I am thankful to be feeling better. Uh, folks, I've often talked about making money on this podcast by investing in crypto, but truly health is wealth. If you don't have your health, you can't enjoy the fruits of your labor or your investments. So I want to wish you all a happy and healthy and prosperous 2024. Uh, thank you all for your support. And I'm looking forward to getting back to 100% and providing great content to you. Well, folks, we got big news. First, let's start off with the price of Bitcoin. Right now, if I refresh here on CoinMarketCap, Bitcoin is over $46,000. It is making a move. And as always, the altcoins are usually watching and waiting for Bitcoin's next move because the liquidity flows from Bitcoin down to the altcoins. Uh, right now, Bitcoin, though, moving strong, it looks like it wants to go for 47000 It's uh, over 46619 bucks. So that's a great sign. Uh, if we look here on the charts, you know, Bitcoin has been consolidating, chopping. Uh, there's a lot of volatility, right, folks? But that's the nature of this market. And we use the volatility to our advantage. We can swing trade. It gives us buying opportunities. And um, look, I am, as I've been saying, saying it for over a year now, I'm expecting Bitcoin to go to 50K or so, 48 to 50K, top out, and then roll over and test that 30K support level. That is a mean, that's the end of the bull market. It will continue. We will see a slow steady grind up to new all-time highs, which could happen later in 2024. That's been my thesis. You guys know I've got the receipts. Now, some are saying, you know, this could be a move to new all-time highs. Anything is possible. Don't get me wrong. Is The question is, is it highly probable? I don't think it's highly probable because uh, there's nothing here that says that we are deviating from the four-year cycles and we have to wait and see what the Fed is going to do with cutting rates and QE coming back. In fact, today we got from uh, Fed's Bostick saying, I see two quarter point rate cuts appropriate by the end of the year. So I think we will see some rate cuts this year. Um, that will bring volatility to the market in the short term, but the long term, we're fine. Um, I think we are out of the woods in a sense that, look, 2022 was rough, right? They tightened, they raised rates, uh, markets collapsed, they hit the bottom, and we've been you know, working our way out of that. So we are on the upward trend. And if you're looking at the hourly and daily, you will be disappointed. There will be volatility. But when you zoom out on the charts and you look at the macro, it is looking bullish. Now, the DXY um, here looks to be breaking down a bit. Uh, I'm hoping it continues to do that so assets will move. And, uh, you know, this is why Bitcoin hasn't been doing nothing for the past uh, few weeks. You see the DXY has been moving upward. So you have to look at these different factors and see the correlation, and it will help you to understand what's happening in the market. So if I see the DXY pumping upwards and Bitcoin's not doing anything or altcoins are not doing anything, I'm like, all right, I'm stepping away for a bit because... There's nothing to trade here. But if the DXY is going down and Bitcoin's moving, okay, I'm interested again. Um, I can uh, play some uh, swing trades here, or I can look to take profits on my targets that I have in place. Well, folks, the big news of the day, though, is that CNBC is reporting that the Bitcoin spot ETFs could be approved by Wednesday. So that will be Wednesday, the 10th of January, and uh, trading could happen this week. Now, folks... I want to make sure I give you the full perspective. Am I bullish? Am I expecting the ETF approvals this week? Yes. But as I said before, anything is possible. Scumbag regulator Gary Gensler could pull out some sort of delay tactic. Who knows what he would come up with? Um, is that highly probable, though? I don't think so. I, I think the approvals will happen, but you never know. So just be prepared is what I'm saying. 
you know, have a, have a plan. Okay, what if it doesn't get approved? And I think there's going to be a good amount of volatility this week. So just be prepared for all these things. Once you can mentally conceptualize, you know, here's other, here are the possible scenarios and pathways for this market, um, it will allow you to, one, be confident because you are prepared, and two, uh, know what's your strategy. You know, if you're doing some swing trading or you're planning to take profits like I am, you know, Bitcoin at 50K, and then that liquidity flows to the alts. We see the alts pop off. Some have already been popping off, obviously, and, and we got to watch the retracement levels, the Fibonacci levels on the charts to know, hey, it's topped out here for the moment. Take your profits or just leave it and hold for the new all-time highs uh, in the late 2024, early 2025 uh, peak. So we'll have to wait and see, but uh, let me play the clip here and, and what the, the folks at CNBC are reporting. David, yeah, that is the question. A Bitcoin ETF, it's now widely expected to get the green light this week. Two sources close to the process now telling me it's looking like Wednesday, which is also the deadline for Kathy Wood's ARC and 21 shares bid. Then I'm told potential trading would happen Thursday or Friday, but it has been a moving target here on dates. The SEC is expected to prove, approve rather a handful of applications at once. Those sponsors filing even more paperwork this morning where we are starting to get a sense of this price war emerging. There are 13 applications out there. So there you have it. And let's hope CNBC is right. Uh, for sure, this morning we had our deadline where everyone had to submit their S1s uh, and an S3 in Grayscale's case. And, um, you know, it's just a waiting game now. Now, what's fascinating is that the competition around fees has been heating up. And look, I've often said competition is great for the consumer. So this is good. Um, some people are saying, hey, look, these guys are cutting their fees. Are they going to make money? But I think everyone is trying to come out the door with a big bang, right? They know the competition is going to heat up here. Uh, there's going to be big marketing around this product. And they can always start off with low fees and then increase those fees over time. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, there was big adjustments to fees uh, from Grayscale to BlackRock to Bitwise, you name it. Um, they are all looking to cut their fees. Now, Grayscale's fees is at 1.5%. They have the highest, which is <laughs> incredible. Uh, Bitwise has the lowest at 0.24%. Uh, followed by Vanek at 0.25%. So folks, this is good. This is healthy. Competition's healthy. It's always beneficial to the consumer. So uh, looking bullish, I think the fact that they're doing this, right? They're having this game theory playing out here, this competition uh, for these fees shows that I think they're confident that the approvals are around the corner, even if scumbag regulator Gary Genser decides to delay another week or two uh, I think we can see this is around the corner. Remember, the courts destroyed Gary Genser and the SEC, calling them arbitrary and capricious in denying Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin spot ETF application. So Gary, uh, if he, he tries to go against the courts, he's going to be in even more trouble. It's not going to look good for him. And there's a lot of eyes on this now. It's not like this is some small thing in the corner. This is huge. Big Wall Street names are here. And you got the big courts, you know, calling you out. He's going to have to move. So I think he's his hand is going to be forced here, even uh, to the chagrin of Elizabeth Warren and her clown party. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great crypto platform. I've been using them since 2018 to buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. Uh, they have a great app, great platform. And best of all, folks, uh, this is important. They are secure. They have proof of reserves. They have transparency reports, audits, and much more. So you can go verify that your funds are there. They're not lending it out. They're not commingling and all that nonsense. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, this morning, a standard chartered bank put out a prediction here. They're saying the spot ETFs may bring in 50 to $100 billion of inflows in 2024. You know, it's to be seen. I, I personally don't know uh, how much capital is going to come in. I believe capital will come in over time. You know, one, one of the things you don't want to fall into or traps you don't want to fall into is that, oh, as soon as it's approved, that means tomorrow $500 billion is coming into the market. It doesn't happen that way there will be a crawl, walk, run process. So please keep that in mind, right? The media and some certain folks will try to hype it up as though like next month, you're going to see a billion dollars. 
it's going to take time. The marketing is going to start. They have to educate the wealth managers, the registered investment advisors. Um, this is, you know, if any of you have a investment advisor, whether it be Fidelity, Edward Jones, uh, Charles Schwab, whatever, these people are not just going to just jump all right on board this ship. It's going to take time. So the money will come in. Don't get me wrong. It's going to bring a lot of capital in. Um, but it's going to take time. There's probably going to be a six-month ramp-up lead time. Uh, this is just normal business practice. And if you look at the gold chart, when the ETFs were approved, it didn't skyrocket in the next month or two months. It took time, right? So just be prepared for that. But this all dovetails with the parabolic rise to new all-time highs that we are expecting in late 2024 into 2025. So I think around the world, people are recognizing that uh, this thing is here to stay. We are headed to a new level, a higher plateau when it comes to investing in crypto. Now, folks, what's interesting, and I think this is very big, is that we're getting reports that JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs are in talks with Grayscale about the Bitcoin ETF role. Here are some other folks who are reporting that BlackRock, Valkyrie are named authorized participants, including JP Morgan for the Bitcoin ETF. And just what was it, like a month ago, Jamie Dimon was sitting with Elizabeth Warren in front of Congress saying, this is all for scammers and fraudsters and criminals, right? But as I've been saying, folks, watch what they do, not what they say. Jamie Dimon for years has been fooling retail. He puts out a narrative out there, scares retail or gets them to be bullish while he's doing the opposite. So again, watch what they do, not what they say. And this is the game they've been playing for a long time. Now, due to the internet and social media, we're able to pick these things up because everything lives on the internet now forever. And we're able to look back and say, hey, wait a minute, six months ago, you said this, and now you're saying something different. But, uh, you know, Jamie knows that we are just a handful of people who recognize the game and are here to make money. But the rest of the average Joe and Jane who are very passive about these things are not financially educated or not doing research are just going to pick up the headlines of what he said. Oh, Jamie Dimon said Bitcoin and crypto is for scammers and fraudsters. I better not touch it. But then it's easy for JP Morgan to flip it six months from now and call you up and say, hey, Mr. Jones, um, we are now offering a Bitcoin ETF product via our partner BlackRock. Would you like to invest some of your funds? We can easily move it from your CD account or your other blah, blah, blah investments in TradFi. Very easy for them to do that. And usually those people end up paying a premium, right? And Jamie Dimon, JB Morgan will make their fees. You see how the game's played? They, they play you, and this is why you have to be educated. This is why you don't listen to financial media or Jim Cramer. You don't take investment advice from them. Now, Gary Genser, scumbag regulator Gary Genser, today did something interesting. You know, he usually puts out his uh, bullshit propaganda around crypto and yada, yada. But some people are calling out that this time around, he didn't say crypto asset securities. He said crypto asset investments. Very interesting change of tone. If you know Gary, he's a smart guy. He's no dummy. So the fact that he's framing it this way, a very bullish sign, folks. He's losing. He's losing. And he knows that just going around saying crypto asset securities is actually prejudging the market, right? Because these SEC guys will always say, oh, the facts and circumstances with each project. Yet he will go out and make a blanket statement. They're all crypto asset securities. Clearly a hypocrite and a liar. And this is why we got to hold him accountable and keep calling him out. And we have social media and we can do that, folks. Now, uh, the crypto investment products uh, begin 2024 with $151 million inflows during the first week. So digital asset investment products saw inflows of $151 million. Uh, Bitcoin funds registered inflows of $133 million amid anticipation of a spot Bitcoin ETF being approved in the U.S. So interest is ramping up. Um, like I said, in addition to the macro that the Fed appears to have completely stopped uh, their tightening cycle, don't get me wrong, you know, they have to cut and then start QE again, you know, official QE, the money printer, they've been doing different things behind the scenes where global liquidity is on the rise again, but the full on money printer, like we've seen historically has not been turned on yet. That is coming. That's coming. So, uh, you know, there's... 
there's a, still some time to go here before we are in a full on bull market. But uh, we're at the start of it, right? We're at the, we're at the start of it. The fuse has been lit, I, I would like to say. Now, globally, we're seeing interest in cryptocurrency rise. Here, Michael Cameron highlighted the Chinese Communist Party officially leaning into Web3. The Ministry of Industry Information Technology recently uh, released a statement on proposal number 02969, proposal on promoting the development of Web3 industry. Uh, he highlighted here some key takeaways. He said the ministry recognizes the opportunity to seize Web3. Its past work includes optimizing the policy environment, deepening technical expertise in concepts like NFTs, uh, accelerating pilots in 60 non-financial fields, creation of the CCP-friendly technical standards. Um, it goes on and on, you know, talking about blockchain strategy, NFTs, dApps, and so forth. But folks, China is on board. You know, they uh, years ago did their stupid pseudo ban. Um, and years ago, I said, it's very easy for them to pivot and and, and uh, unban. And I often have said any country that bans crypto is writing their economic death sentence, because this is going to be the future of GDP growth, just like dot com internet businesses contributed to GDP growth uh, in many countries, especially here in the United States. So they know what's coming. And I think a lot of this was smoke and mirrors to fool retail so people wouldn't take a position. Uh, but the narrative will flip and then they will be promoting it to people. They'll be ed educating people about blockchain and the, the, we know the CBDCs are coming. So I hope you see the direction all of this is heading despite you know stupid little smoke and mirrors and nonsense comments from Jamie Dimon and certain governments. Uh, it, many times you do have people who hate crypto. You have short sellers. So they influence politicians like Elizabeth Warren, right? But uh, it, they're, they're just small roadblocks, little bumps on the road. They, they can't stop this train. It has left the station. Now, here's another example. Japan's e-commerce giant Mercari plans to accept Bitcoin payments per report. This is uh, released today. The online secondhand goods marketplace has already launched its in-app Bitcoin exchange for users last year. Oh, but I thought this was all for criminals, guys. I thought this was all for scammers and fraudsters. <laughs> Watch what they do, not what they say. All right, let's uh, end it here by taking a look at the price of Bitcoin. Is it at 47000 yet? Nope, but it's close, folks. $46,886. We might see you 47 today. Uh, so be prepared. If you're looking to take profits at 48 to 50 k I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just highly, oh, whoa, 46935 We are close to $47,000. Um, you know, stick to your plan. Um, that's what I'm doing. And then once Bitcoin rolls over to test the lows, I'll be buying the bottom again. Um, but folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Folks, sign up for my free email newsletter. Follow me on TikTok, LinkedIn, a Facebook. Uh, all those social media links will be in the description. It supports the podcast. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a follow, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all for watching and listening. And as mentioned, I, I want to wish you all a happy, healthy, and prosperous uh, 2024. May this year bring us a lot of wealth, <laughs> uh, happiness, of course, and health is, of course, the most important. All right, guys, I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.